Hello everybody, this is Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Golf Mike here with you. The topic of this video is with regards to the question, is the S11 phase displayed on the Nano VNA the same as the phase relationship between the voltage and current in a circuit under test? And so what I've done here is I've set up my Nano VNA and here is our crude circuit under test with uh, bent leads and the whole works here. So, um... There seems to be a common mistake that I keep seeing over and over when reading posts regarding, uh, well, also watching YouTube videos on this subject. And to be honest with you, I fell into this trap myself when I first got my Nano VNA. And that trap is to read the phase as displayed on the Nano VNA. Let's see if I can get rid of some of those reflections. That is to read the phase as displayed on the Nano VNA as being the same as the relationship between the voltage and current in this reactive circuit here. Um, so the answer to that question is no. The phase on the Nano VNA is not the same as the phase found in this circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate why this is the case. And I'm going to cover some math to show what the relationship actually is between those two phase angles. So in order to answer this question, the first thing we should probably do is ask ourselves, how does the nano VNA work? So what it does is it sends a stimulus out down the coax and it comes out the alligator clips and it goes, it stimulates this device or a circuit under test. Um, from that, there's going to be a little bit of a reflection come back and the nano VNA looks at that as well. So the outgoing wave is called the incident wave and the one coming back is called the reflected. And from that comes something called the reflection coefficient, which is then graphically represented on the Smith chart. So I've got the reflection coefficient um, being displayed right here. I'll show, show you how I get there on mine. It might not be the same on all of the uh, nano VNAs. But if we go to the main menu and you go under marker and you go under Smith value, um, this is probably the one that you're most familiar with. I believe that it's, it comes up by default on all of the nano VNAs. What I've done is I've gone and selected this function here. What this is, is it's displaying the reflection coefficient. So if you look at, at this here, this S11 phase, which on some VNAs is uh, CH0 phase, you'll see it's 62.5 degrees and look at here on our reflection coefficient we have a magnitude of 0 0.44 at an angle of 62.5 so what this s11 or ch0 phase is is actually the direction of our uh, of our reflection coefficient so how does it work well here's our purely resistive line in the center of the of the smith chart and our 50 ohm point here 50 ohm pure resistive so if we go up from this line uh, and to an angle of 62.5 degrees and we travel 0 0.44 from that center point, we wind up right here. So um, at this frequency, let me get rid of that there, at the frequency that we're looking at right now, 538 kilohertz, we're stimulating this circuit at 538 kilohertz and looking at what comes back and the graphical representation of uh, the difference between the incident and the reflected wave is this reflection coefficient, which turns out to be right here. So now that we know a little bit about how the nano VNA works, and uh, we've also looked at the fact that the S11 or CH0 phase angle is actually the, the phase angle of the reflection coefficient. Um, the next logical question would be to, would be to ask is, is what is the relationship between the reflection coefficient and the voltage and, uh, versus current phase angle that would be found in this reactive circuit? Um, okay, so let's let's go about trying to figure this out. So first I'm going to draw you a diagram of what I've built here. So we'll start off with the VNA and we'll draw it uh, like so. And there's our VNA and we have a transmission line. And this is our calibration plane, which um, corresponds to these points here. I'm not going to go into how I calibrated these alligator clips at this point here because I've done it in a previous video. 
um, but that is where I've calibrated the point of reference for the um, nano VNA to take its readings from. And connected to that is, uh, well, if we go like that, we have an inductor and we have a resistor. Okay, that's a little bit ugly. <laughs> Let's uh, just do it like that. Okay, so this is a 15 micro Henry inductor and this set of resistors is set up to equal 50 ohms series parallel arrangement there okay so that is the reactive circuit or the device under test and um, what we've got here is a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms on the transmission line and of course the nano vna is 50 ohms as well so what i've gone and done is i've set this up so that i read see here 50 ohms reactive which is telling me that at this frequency 537 kilohertz that at that frequency the reactance of this inductor is 50 ohms uh, let's go and change this display here back to this one here okay so what we've got here is, is we're reading, well, 14.8 microhenries, and we've got a 50.8 ohm um, amount of, of DC re or pure resistance. So that's our resistors, and this would be our, our uh, inductor here, which corresponds to our circuit. So why have I picked 50 ohms? Well, it's because it's easy to demonstrate in um, a graphical form uh, or to illustrate in a graphical form what's going on in this circuit right here. So let's go ahead and draw a vector diagram that illustrates. And let's just go one, two, three, and one, two, three, like that. Okay, so this is going to be our inductive reactance, and this is our resistance. <clears throat> um, in this circuit, I have 50 ohms of reactance, 50 ohms here. And let's just pretend that this one is actually 50 ohms right on the button as well, the resistance. So if we have 50 ohms of reactance and 50 ohms of resistance, the vector, these, these vectors are the same distance. One, two, three, one, two, three, yep. So the vector sum is going to result in this right here, okay? So now what this is, is it is a uh, impedance of 50 ohms plus J 50 ohms. Now, this angle right here is the phase angle of this circuit at this frequency of 537 kilohertz. So if these two vectors are the same length, then this angle must be 45 degrees. So that is the phase angle that's in our circuit. And yet, what are we reading here? 62.7 degrees. So these two are not the same thing. Let's write this down. The S11 phase angle, or the phase angle of the reflection coefficient, is currently 62.7 degrees clearly not the same. All right, so what is the relationship between these two things? Well, let's look at our reflection coefficient here to start off with. So let's go like that. So this is currently, I'm going to go back here on this on the nano VNA. We're going to go into marker Smith value and we're going to go back to display our reflection coefficient is currently 0.44 at an angle of 62.6 degrees. So in order to get our impedance of the load, the formula is the characteristic impedance times one plus the, the uh, reflection coefficient over one minus the reflection coefficient. So let's go ahead and do this math. So this, the impedance of the load is equal to 50 ohms times one plus, and of course this is a complex number, so we have to stuff this whole thing in here. 0.44 at an angle of 62.6 degrees over 
1 minus 0.44 at an angle of 62.6 degrees. So I'm uh, going to do the math on this, but I'm going to cheat. My Texas Instruments calculator allows me to enter values in polar notation and to perform math upon those values and it's very convenient so let's go and enter those numbers here so 62.6 degrees and we have an angle of 0.4 or a, a um, magnitude of 0.44 with an angle of 62.6 degrees and then minus 0.44 at an angle of 62.6 Point six degrees okay and push enter and it spits out a number so it is telling me that the impedance of the load is currently 51.127 at uh, plus J 49.534 ohms that's our current impedance Okay, according to that uh, reflection coefficient. So what's the next step after that? How do we get out of this the phase angle? Well, there's a handy dandy formula for that, which is the inverse tangent times the inductive reactance over the resistance. So this phase angle will then be, uh, this would be our 49 0.534 over, uh, let's get rid of that, 49.534 over 51.127, okay, we can go ahead and do that math as well, we'll pull it down in the calculator and let's go punch those numbers in, so 49.534 over 51.127 and let's get our answer 44 so the phase angle according to this is 44.1 degrees so from that you can see that um, this s11 phase angle or the reflection coefficient is not the same as the phase angle in our circuit Hopefully that demonstrates the relationship. They are related because as the frequency changes here, the reactance of this circuit is going to change. It's going to change the reflection coefficient and you can see where this all goes. Thank you for joining me once again on this journey of, of discovery and learning with the Nano VMA. It's a never ending thing. But uh, I think my time is finished here with the Nano VNA for tonight and I'm going to turn over to the radio and spin the dial and wow there's a lot of digital activity on the air tonight